<laughs> så lyder det ikke. Så lyder Let's go, Cesar. Our actual episode. Let's go. Let's go. Day. How are you living? Bien, bien, and you? Bien, bien. You got, you got uh, Sunday League you started. I got Sunday League. Let's go. Yeah, super excited to be back playing Sunday League. It had been two or three years. It, it had been a while. Uh, but I'm back with a lot of folks from our hometown. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's fun going out there, uh, yelling at everybody over the weekend. I almost lost my voice because as a goalie. A keeper. Eh, moviendo el queso por moviendo el de queso. Tú muévete. ¿Qué, ¿Qué estás haciendo, güey? Sí. ¿A quién defiendes? ¿A ese o a ese? Trucha, o a nadie. Cabrón. And then playing in a field that's all muddy también. Toda, uh, people slipping. Had, Christmas uh, Hill Park or which one? Y, yeah. No Christmas way. Is that bad? Uh, on one side of the field, uh, the goalie, the 18-yard box is muddy. <laughs> oh, It's fuck. like the irrigation. There's like a broken pipe somewhere in, in the grassy fucking mud everywhere, bro. So I came out of the game all muddy, and I was like, hey, beautiful Sunday league. Those we're, battle scars we're back. from Sunday we league. So back, That's yeah. what it is, dog. It's, it's la hermosura. hermosura. It's not even raining. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's not even winter. You're it coming was out super wrecked. sunny, clear, blue skies. Y yo viento. Did your mom get all mad when you get home on Badal? Nah, nah. But She's used to it. Yeah. Your keeper. But, yeah. Damn. I'm hoping to start soon. Balls deep, FC. We're starting our co-ed league up again next Monday. Let's go. Uh, we we had a little mini scrimmage a couple we- the past couple weeks. We've been scrimmaging a bit on Mondays, and we're cooking. We got some ballers out there. Hell yeah, we got bro. some good players. I can't. You got to play Sunday league uh, in down in the South Bay so we can play. That's what I'm hoping for. There's a team out there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna shout. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna put y'all on blast. But there's a team that's reached out to get me to play. Unfortunately, Sunday league is tough because then, like, you can't do anything on the weekends. Yeah, because you like Saturday, you can't be fucking all turnt, yeah. and then Sun like you can't go out of town Friday or Saturday because you got to be back since Sunday morning. It's a tough thing, so I, I let the team know. Con mis respetos, no, I was like, hey, uh, contract negotiations are still tough. Yeah, no, but le dije like, I'm not gonna be here some Sundays, so if y'all are cool with that, I mean, I can help out whenever. O pues si no, pues mejor get somebody that'll be here full time. Yeah, so yeah, I mean. Domingo de foot locked in yada for the next few weeks. That's a, that's fun. I I miss the competitiveness of Sunday league, especially the men's league there in Gilroy. It's a good competitive league. It's healthy, and then uh, and then well, the one thing that I was thinking of the most is like I feel really good on turf right now with my game right now. I feel I'm at a good level, but like I remember pl- like playing turf during the week and then going Sunday league in Gilroy. No, my was called the beaches, the los topos y todo. Like you think you got a good touch coming, that shit fucking. Ooh. Yeah, I was telling my defenders like, yo, if you're gonna Open pass my- me back the ball, <laughs> pass it on that dry side, okay? <laughs> Jump it over that little that big old mud spots right on the penalty. We had a penalty at the 90th minute, bro. I swear, and like they had it, the paste. That no, we it was for, oh, for us. You, yeah. yeah. It, it, we were down one zero all game until the last like manota. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the penalty spot was like in the middle of the puddle, <laughs> and like I told the guy one two steps way porque si te pones hasta atrás no la vas a volar or you're gonna or slip. You're gonna slip. Uh, but yeah, it was really bad. So. But like I said, bro, it's fucking Sunday League. Like, what else can we expect? It is Sunday League <laughs> shenanigans, dog. Yeah. It's what it is. I was thinking of going to uh, Ben Foster and then putting a GoPro in one of the corners, oh, bro. Man. Fucking like, you know, should do this. There's a dude in our <laughs> league that would do that. Yeah. Who do some pretty good saves. Uh, but yeah, when we beat them once, I was like, hey, can I get that footage? <laughs> um, no, yeah, but that's, uh, yeah, that's what I missed about Sunday League, man. And it gets competitive, but. Yeah, some fun stuff like that with the bad bounces. You're, you're never gonna get a good uh, a good run with the ball. And I love playing on the ground at the at the back from as a defender. I love playing with the keep whenever we get too much pressure. Mm-hmm. And it's just tough because like sometimes you can't. So I tell you, since Sunday, like rompela. Say sí. no, 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 no. Don't get cute with it and try to do a fake. Hacia el delantero. The forwards know how shitty it is, and those fools are sniping at you for it. Yeah, you can't go to the we were keeper. Like, 
so what the fuck are we doing? We're trying to press, but if we press long ball and then defenders are over here slipping, trying to get the, the first ball or the second ball. It's like you have to figure out the tactics because if you try to be all Man City, Bar Prime Barcelona, they want to chingar. With, yeah, with the, the, with the bad batches and the go for the holes. best teams in all honesty get like a good hybrid of like you know what uh, defenders a la media y a lo mejor vamos picando el delantero and then every like 30 minutes in everyone just fucking forgets tactic yes and then like the field got worse because of the play and bruh they send you a ball i'm not got a mock no vámonos. my striker is the fastest player on the field so yeah. i'm gonna mandalo send uh that homie over there all right folks let's get it episode probably 116 depending if i get out the bonus episode before this one uh by episode 116 or 117 let's go we're moving we're back again like we were mentioning on the bonus episode we took a bit of a hiatus to kind of you know regroup it all but ya regresamos. hopefully get you guys more content so subscribe to us share us with a friend so that we can continue growing picking up that momentum but seguir chingándole seguir chingándole y dándole gas a huevo uh, but yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. Premier League. Uh, I don't think we've covered Premier League at all since we got. We haven't been two two weeks, two or three weeks. Premier League is back. Three La weeks. Liga is back. We'll talk about those. <laughs> uh, Bundesliga, Liga MX is at the like at the middle of the season, and your America is doing terrible. My Chivas is doing good, so we'll talk about that. And we'll bring it on home with games to watch, folks. All right. The biggest thing, I think, uh, on the Twitters, on the news about footy world, the Arsenal versus Brighton match. We'll start off with the Premier League. Arsenal drop points, which is always a big story at the beginning of the season when Arsenal drops those points with the tie versus Brighton. And uh, Twitter was aflame because of the what a lot of people blamed for that, which is a uh, red card to Declan Rice. After two yellows, one pretty stupidly, the other one even more stupid. Yep. For some shenanigans for uh, getting into it with Joel Veltman from Brighton. Joel Veltman tries to come out playing quickly. And Declan Rice gives it a little, you know, a little schoolboy tap. to make Go go for it, you know. They da un madrazo, Veltman. But the ref, what he sees is, hey, you fucked with the play? Vámonos, tómala. Yeah, um, if you haven't checked out that play, go check it out. Uh, but basically... The Brighton player kicks Declan Rice. But right before he kicks Declan Rice, Declan Rice kicks the ball away. Mm -hmm. So the the call was that Declan Rice was impeding the the restart flow of the, of the play, game or whatever. Right? Yeah, uh, which was so stupid on Declan Rice, in my opinion, um, for him to do that. He just seemed frustrated with how the game was going. It was so high up the pitch. Why aren't you jogging back to your position? So, in your opinion. On Declan Rice, valid yellow, callete a las regaderas. Yeah, at first I thought it was harsh, but looking a few uh, um, repetitions of the play, I was like, no, Declan Rice is in the wrong here. I, I don't agree. Why? Because a couple reasons. First and foremost, if we're talking about, like, uh, are you giving the yellow because he is impeding the play? The ball was rolling. So you can't you can't take the ball out. like that. That's not valid to kick the ball. Off of a like a free kick from a foul while it's rolling. Yeah, he also threw it way the hell forward, which we see day in and day out. That if you kick the ball forward, the forward or whoever's there, kind of working their way back into the game, will kick it back to you. Yeah, right. And to be like, hey, right, yeah, I got thrust, uh. But in this case, just because Declan Rice gets a little tap on it to the side, all of a sudden everyone's saying like, no, 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 he he stopped the fluidity of the game. It was about to. He was about to do an amazing counterattack or something, but the ball was the biggest thing. The ball was rolling. Yeah. And uh, I, at that point, I think it's just a matter of like it, what pisses me off, which is I think is the ref is just doing too much, in my opinion, if, if we're taking those things into account. I think the ref is trying to get too involved in a game where they don't need to. Um, th a lot of people were comparing it to the first half. Joao Pedro uh, lets a ball go out of bounds. And out of frustration, while it's going out of bounds, he kicks it hella hard out of bounds even further. And without uh, before all of that play even happened, in this play with Joao Pedro, Arteta's yelling for a yellow. Uh, I think Odegaard's like laughing at the ref like, bro, that's a yellow. right? Yeah. And then the ref doesn't give it. 
Um, even though that's an after the play thing, heat of the moment, you know, within a couple of steps. Y lo lo hace Declan Rice. Heat of the moment, just a couple steps, barely awkwardly lengthwise. And then Amaria, tomala. Yeah. The difference, in my opinion, with Joao Pedro is that Joao Pedro is doing all of this outside of the pitch. What does that matter? It, it's, it's it's outside. It had to pitch. be outside of the pitch, but that's because the play had ended, right? Right. And whenever a play ends, you see it all the time. A forward on and off sides, the ref stops the game. The forward still kicks it to goal. the The keeper gets all pissed. A Maria, boom. There's more arguments that Declan Rice deserved that yellow than Yoa Pedro did. I it mean, uh, I think apparent. more. Yeah, it looked more apparent like that Yoa Pedro porque le da un madrazo al balón. But estás, you're at home. But tell me, right? it's not the same. So, it's not the same because one is inside of the field and the other one's outside of the. What does pitch. that have to do with anything? That you have ball boys, you can restart the play. There's other balls along the the line. También the other one, the ball boy can give no. you another ball. What's the difference? He he threw the ball to to restart the play. But he also he kicked it back ball. into play, like he. Who, Pedro? Yeah, like like it's. I think we're getting away from like uh, from like the uh, and, overall and premise of it. Both of them are wasting time. Both of, both of them are impeding play from starting, uh, doing things out of frustration. We can say right. Uh, even Tim Howard was saying like, "Let's use common sense," and then they show him both videos. See, common sense. I don't think Joao Pedro should have been giving uh, a yellow here. I love it, ref. All he did was. Mess up the flow of the game. Next play, they literally show the video of Declan Jesus Rice, and he's like, Christ. all right, showing common <laughs> sense, he's impeding the flow of the game. And I'm like, bro, like, it's the same judgment across both being used differently. Yes, Declan Rice got a tap on it while he was trying to play it, but the, it wasn't going to be a valid play. Would the would the ref have given Joel Veltman, Veltman a what, yellow? What do you mean by it wasn't going to be a valid play? Because the ball was rolling. The ball was rolling, yeah. right? But it was gonna stop for him to kick it. We've no, seen it. it's not gonna. Balls was don't it, stop for you to it, kick it. You, he's throwing the ball, and the ball is still rolling when Declan touches it, which is right when Veltman hit him. The ball would have been rolling. No, it wouldn't have, dude. Oh my god, <laughs> there. <laughs> Look, you're Declan Rice. You already have a yellow. Why are you getting involved in? in I've seen the wildest things on Twitter, but the wildest thing I've heard is that the ball would have stopped for him to hit it. Yes, when it you throw the ball out. The ball is going to keep going. He kicked Declan Rice because he knew Declan Rice was going to get a touch on it. And it's a free little fucking aggression play IE. Yes. But, like, the okay, ball dale, was not going to have stopped. Dale a los dos. Yeah. Okay. ¿Qué le but pasa he didn't. Declan Rice? But he didn't. Okay. Okay. But he it's didn't. harsh. It's harsh. Yeah, it is harsh. Right. But it would have been a red either way. It would have been a, yeah, a red either way. But follow the right That's rule. The point. Yes. No, no, no. Follow the right rule. So if you're not going to do it to Joao Pedro in the first half, then oh, don't okay, do it to Declan okay. Rice. I if you're not going to give it, if you're not going to give it for a madrazo to Declan Rice to Joao Vettman, then don't give it to Declan Rice for shithousery. All of them would have been a yellow because according to... But the, was the it? Play. No, it Entonces? wasn't. So you're mad. Entonces, then it shouldn't have you're been. You're mad at the referee. Yeah. But still, if you're Declan, I'd be more mad at Declan Rice because he gave the ref I mean, the it was it was boneheaded. I mean, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. it was boneheaded. So let's be mad at, at no, it was boneheaded. But ref, don't feel the necessity to get involved in the game when you don't have to. It's stupid. Like, bruh, diles, that's naughty. Put it down. Amanos, play on. Somos hombrecitos, way. Uh -huh. We're gonna get heated. No, mames, when you're keeper, and you're pulling Debo Martinez types plays. All of those are yellows. Yeah. All of those Possibly. are yellows. It, All it of those what I do. allegedly yellows, right? <laughs> but like, I got la misma cosita, way. No mames, way. How many times in games are you not like, bro? Like, I'll fucking be slapping fools around, like, and be like, hey, wey, pinche balón, ve agarra la wey, ve, tú ve agarra la wey. Bueno, che, pues, ahora right, you guys got the short and the stick. Don't tell me it wasn't a yellow. It wasn't deserving of a yellow, just like if, the rest of them were. If you're gonna give yellows, give them out evenly, give them out correctly, and he didn't. Okay, right. Then if you're not going to give them out, it's shit housery. Let it fucking happen. Play on. I still believe like Declan Rice is in the wrong. Of course, okay. everyone's in the wrong if you do some stupid shit. Like in all of the plays, all the Nahuel Guzman shit that he does with Tigres. Yeah, he's in the wrong. But like sometimes when you're not, when you're not being, when it's not that fucking crazy, bro. Refs, 
even the Federación Mexicana or whoever, like whoever the hell's the governing bodies or whatever, play on, brother. Like, so I'm like, hasta a mí me da pinche hueva hablar de eso, cause I'm like, bro, get a little tap, <laughs> te dan un madrazo y a ti te dan amarillo. Oh my god, it's just it's so interesting because you guys drop points because of that play. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, who it's, knows, it's right? So, Arsenal could have defended better, but the ball on Joao Pedro's goal, who Joao Pedro scored it, went right through the middle. Right, it was yes. a beautiful ball straight through Did the you middle. See Thomas Partey fucking jogging. Yeah, but like, <laughs> but bro, my my dude's partner in crime, my la media is missing. Was that yeah. cabron, right? Yeah, true. So you can argue because of Declan or because of not Declan that they lost. They could have defended better. Otherwise, they could have put dropped their forward and done better. But. Uh, that's another story. But by me, that shit's soft as hell. It is soft. It but is. at the end of the day, si le das los argumentos. Eso no es mi fútbol que me enamoró. Pues ya sé. Pero es lo, también es lo bonito del fútbol. Que no, está feo pasar. esa madre. Está feo esa madre. Um, but Brighton moves to fourth with that. Brighton is playing really well. For all they're, the, look, they're looking like, a, I mean, as successful as the Servi's first season. And yeah. It's yeah. like the the transition of management. It, it wasn't apparent. Well, like, the Brian Brian management is so good at getting good young players, mm -hmm. right? From the fucking the littlest of fucking pueblitos where they find them, but also managers. Yes, Grand Potter was cooking. Yep, and sold then, them to Chelsea, and I'm then gonna... sold them. Dame mi dinerito, way. Sí. Then you get the Serbi. Who knows if they got money for the Serbi? He went to Marseille, right? Yeah, he was doing good until the last season. Como que he lost the locker room, in my opinion. And then now they have like a 34 year old American born in Houston who's been uh, like a, like an assistant coach, which is like the, it's like the theme right now. Find a, like a pinche, un hot headed, attacking minded young assistant and give them the job as yeah. head coach. And they're doing, they're, they're hitting it every time with a good uh, player with a good coach signing. Yeah. Even Milner is there. Mm-hmm. Even him, like, he's looking like como que retoña cada season, fucking, he's still running and doing his best. And it's like, it's young. Yes, they're getting a lot of young players, but then you also seen it with Milo. It's like the complete organization of Brighton can is doing really well yeah. in general in all they, places. They're, they got they got good energy, and it's like, it's, it's good DNA. Yeah. It's like the opposite of Chelsea. Exactly. It's like Chelsea's just <laughs> vile, and, like, it hurts them. This Brian team put us the Welbeck. Sí, we. No manches. Yeah. Like, Even their jerseys are fucking sick, too. That yeah. yellow one is nice. The so Seagulls, like, man. They're good. Yeah, so excited to see Brighton and, and Mitoma and, and my appeal. <laughs> <I'm with us. laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's good to see them at the top. Uh, in fourth, who knows if they'll hold it. Uh, but who's not in fourth, but won this weekend, your Newcastle. Amunos. They won Let's two to go. one. They're looking good. Sure. No, they're a little thin. Their center backs are struggling. Yeah. They got Burn and uh, who scored a known goal. Pinche pendejo for my team. <laughs> <laughs> With Kraft. That's that like a weird ass, funny, dude. weird ass center back lineup. Yeah. Yeah. But Oliver Mento on the other side and then on the left side. Uh, I forgot who they Hall, had. No, they, no, they had a No, they had the full from, from Bournemouth. Um, ¿Cómo se llama? The super tall center back from, Dor from Bournemouth that can play outside. Um, Kelly, Lloyd Kelly. Okay. Uh, but then they started bringing back now uh, Trippier is starting to get a couple yeah. minutes now. Bruno Guimaraes in the middle is fucking tearing it up. He's a workhorse. Box to box. Trigger on um, Arsenal. Isak también is fucking amazing. Harvey uh, Barnes también. That man should have gone Arsenal. Damn. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this Newcastle team. They beat Tottenham. Tottenham's just shit, bro. They can't score to save their life. I know it was a burn on uh, goal. They, yeah. they didn't even score them exactly, and I I had uh, like four players in my FPL draft, and I've been dropping them one by one because I'm just like Yo, this, them. this Tottenham team no man no saca una. Well, they were I think they were banking a lot on Solanke right up top, yeah, but he's injured so. And then now, like I mean, he's injured so I mean, put Son up top, let him cook again like last year, right? He was that's what he's doing, but I don't know. I'm I mean me va bien if they do bad, Tottenham. No, but. Another okay. trophy list season. Oh, okay. No, I'll see. Yeah. Uh, but your Newcastle's in fifth. Uh, uh, yeah. they're, they are currently in fifth. Yeah, they're in the last Europe spot. Can they stay there? 
I think it's going to be really tough for them to stay fifth um, just because injuries and then um, they didn't bring anybody as well uh, to kind of help that bench. So I see them getting top six, top seven, and kind of staying in that those spots. I did want them to be top four, but I thought they were going to have a better chance for season with that Saudi money, but nothing came in. So they did nothing. Like they they banked on Sandro Tonali coming back from his his uh, which he did well in the, at the cup. Yeah, he's getting he's getting more. He's back now, which is good. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they have the Brentfords, Aston Villa still underneath them, Tottenham's underneath them, Chelsea's underneath them, Manchester yeah. United's underneath them. So there's some. There will be teams gunning for the spot. Yeah, for so their spots. it's going to be an exciting season for sure. Uh, they should be from mid table going up. Um, but yeah, we'll see if they can break break top four. Killer. Um, on on Sunday we also got Liverpool beating Manchester United three to zero. Yep. And my dumbass didn't captain Salah. I, I gave it to uh, to Cole Palmer, and that should did me dirty. Now, do you have Holland? No, oh, okay. Holland this season, folks. Let us know in the Discord <laughs> if you guys are also doing a Holland list Premier League oh, season. Is that suicide, bro? Every every weekend, I'm like, come on, defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have Holland ca- captain him. That's why I'm top ten, bro. See, no, tuviera hasta la madre hasta abajo. No, for real, because uh, you're getting 34 points a fucking game. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm gonna struggle my FPL, pero I think overall. If we're talking about Manchester United, uh, they're just garbage as well. It's like no Sakanuna, Onana, Maguire, Casemiro's not fucking up as well. Dude, um, Casemiro messed up on two of those goals. That's yeah. crazy. And then you see his wife? No, she pissed. She posted a picture of Casemiro's trophy cabinet. And said, tomala. And said, who the it. fuck are you guys? Look at Casemiro. That's crazy. And then Goldbridge was going off on, ah, oh, yeah, but what is he doing now at United? A bunch of United fans were like, but what about now? Like, we're talking yeah, about now. I mean, yeah, right? So, you, uh, yeah. You don't care about those Madrid trophies. You're like, bro, th- th- we brought you for a reason. <laughs> exactly. The captain in the middle. But now Manchester United went, in, uh, went out and got Ugarte. Manuel Ugarte from, from PSG. Yeah. El, yeah. El Uruguayo. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting what they're going to do. They're like, what, 15th, 14th, somewhere down in the depths uh, with they're Southampton doing. and Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're right above them. Um, they're in 14th. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting what they're going to do. Is the, they brought in, who else? The Ligt. The Ligt, I mean. The Ligt, the the Ligt, Ligt, Ligt. He's barely working his way in. I'm sure that'll solidify something in the back. Yeah. They're going to have the tallest center back in the league and the shortest center back in the league. For real. Playing together. Um, but, y- yeah, I mean, Mo Salah is playing lights out right now. With uh, his new haircut. With his fresh cut. Sheesh. Luis Diaz scored Luis a Diaz. brace. That dude's playing otherworldly también. Liverpool is doing good. Como que ni extrañan al pinche Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, um, Arne Slot, uh, they were playing a similar uh, formation, both teams, but it just came down to mistakes. Yeah. Um, Arsenal knew how to, or Arsenal, Liverpool knew how to capitalize on those mistakes by Casimiro. He, they couldn't crawl this, their, their selves back. And Liverpool is still playing without a striker. Honestly, they're putting Diego Drota out there, who we know is not a, a true nine, because uh, they still don't have Darwizi back. Um, because he's suspended for that Copa America thing, right? No, he came off the bench. He oh, was okay. he's been injured. He's suspended from Uruguay play, I think, oh, for that okay. for that fight. Uh, but yeah, things are going well for for uh, Liverpool, and they're signing more and more players. Uh, so they're just trying to stack up the team. Who did they sign? They got. Uh, I feel like they signed a pretty. Oh, um, Federico Chiesa. Yes, yes, the Italian. Oh, because you needed that, huh? Uh-huh. I don't think you really needed that. But those are those Manchester City type signings, no? We're just like, you know what? Porque me da la chingada gana. They got uh, Champions League, por eso. We'll see. They got to stack up the team. Chelsea doesn't have Champions League, and they're fucking stacking everything. Yeah, Chelsea's fucking. They're in uh, Conference League trying to fucking <laughs> stack a team like they I got s- like. Did you hella. see the meme that they played somebody not too long ago for They played Conference Cervete. League. Yeah, and then. Uh, so Chelsea posted a picture of the airplane on their way to Cervete, and Cervete edited the picture and then just made the airplane super long <laughs> to to symbolize how many players uh, Chelsea have. 
That's crazy. No, it's that's a that's a quality meme. Quality Kud- meme. Kudos thing. to them. They won the internet that day. All right, folks. So yeah, in Premier League is pretty fresh. Let's move on to La Liga. Your Barcelona is Vamos. doing good. Perfect. Twelve points, I believe. Uh, they won seven zero over Real Valladolid. No manches, pobrecitos. Yeah, contra quién jugaron? Con el B o contra contra uh, los los sub quince contra, contra el churrero contra quién <laughs> contra uh. <laughs> the kit man Jonathan <laughs> Paidar no hombre dude they looked Real Valladolid looks so bad yeah they like uh, the Real Madrid beat them three zero and I think they won one of one, the other match um but like every play if you watch the highlights they're just getting like bombarded by by Barcelona mids and forwards yeah going straight at their back line yeah. and then the ball coming into them and they're just like walking in. Yeah, just forward runs. Everybody, I saw uh, the La Mina Ma, the assist he had where he just drove, he just carried the ball for like half the field and then mm-hmm. passed it for a shot. It was like, Entonces, que, a quien, contra quien están jugando? Like, Real Valladolid, like, put up a resistance or algo. But it's just Hansi Fleek has him just high flying. Like yep. no, I, there's nobody else to attribute this to but to to him and giving the confidence and the the athleticism and the tactics to these players to for them to flourish. Yeah, Hansi Flick has got them playing very offensive. I think efficient on offense. They get really good high percentage uh, attacking opportunities in the box, which is what they needed. I think it's benefiting uh, those those forwards, uh, Rafinha, who's mm-hmm. fast and quick enough right now to just get everything in the box. Look at Kaiga. And then even Lewandowski's getting some fucking... Which Rafinha didn't even get called up. For Brazil? For Brazil. Jeez. And then he goes on and scores. Did he score a hat trick? Scored a hat trick. Yeah, this weekend. So, I mean, that's how you respond. You see? Maybe next time at me llaman cabron, as he's saying, huh? Um, the interesting... Uh, what I'm expecting more from Barcelona, they haven't really had a, a true strong opponent just yet. Yeah. They do play Girona after the international break, so in about a week and a half. Para mí ese va a ser bueno. Which is interesting that we're calling out Girona to be a strong team, which the past two, three seasons they have, but historically they, they haven't no. necessarily been that team. City money. Uh, but yeah, that city money coming in and doing them well. They're strong. They're a good team. They're in fifth right now. Yeah, they're in fifth. Girona, so I think that's going to be the good match. Ahí se va a ver. Yeah. Barcelona, I- four points ahead of Real Madrid. Yep. Real Madrid right now, they beat, uh, they beat Betis 2-0 to zero over the weekend. And Bappe got his two goals, and the haters, they had to chill for a ¿Cuál, bit. ¿cuál muchos haters, que, muchos cuál, haters. No, pero es que mirando el, el juego, el gol, el primer gol que metió, Valverde, that's Valverde's goal. Yeah. It's not even Mbappe. Valverde no, pero was los a, haters from gen- past weeks. Oh, sí. The past couple of weeks, I, I saw people, like, even, like, like, top Twitter pages, like, top, like, soccer podcasts being like, oh, Crisis in Madrid? No, ¿Qué no, pasó no, con... Yes. What's up with their star signing Mbappe? And I'm like, my guy, it's three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. He's coming off of an international summer. The whole team is. Everyone's getting injured here in Barcelona. Everyone's kind of figuring it out. If somebody's figuring it out earlier than the other, pues, qué bonito. But we'll see midseason I mean, who really figured it out. Yeah. And now fourth game in and he scores a brace. Muy calladito la gente que decía lo mismo. Y uno by PK. Va, ah, y va a haber look, un chingo, y va look, a haber un chingo de esos. I'm a Barcelona fan, so at the end of the day, I'm just going to hate. But if we're being real, ya yeah, son dos goles, pero los dos goles no estamos diciendo que fueron una genialidad de pues no. Tampoco tienen que he's, ser. He's putting up the numbers, okay, fine. Um, but that's not to say that they've had a slow start. They have had and a slow start. They are figuring it out with so many attacking players how they're going to function as a team. They're four points behind Barcelona. They haven't looked good, great. They're missing Jude Bellingham. They're missing pieces to the team that are usually there. And then even when they have them, it looks like they have too many chefs in the kitchen. Yes. Quien hace que? There was rumors that first game that they like were bumping heads. That Jude was like screaming for the ball from Mbappe. No se la daba. Like, they're going to have to figure things out. Uh, but the talent, is it there? <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. Yes. So we'll see We'll see what comes from them. I believe they play um, They play Real Sociedad next. Yeah, Madrid does. Um, yeah. And So that's going to be a tough match for them, too. 
Uh, pero lo que yo digo es aguas, ¿eh? Por andar hable, hable, hable. Mbappé, oh, Mbappé, no, 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 no. Give it time. Okay. The interesting, the, the It's counterpoint. It's Real Madrid at the end of the day. Yeah, the counterpoint for me is like Mbappé, uh, lo están poniendo fuera de su posición. He's not really a nine. He's more on the wing, but you got Vinny, you got Rodrigo. He's not going to put him anywhere else. So he's got to figure it out the striker position. Yeah, I feel like with so many games that uh, Real Madrid has this season, I think they'll be fine. Um, it's just more of a point that if the other teams like Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, uh, Real Sociedad can keep up and kind of challenge them in La Liga, si no, pues se van a, they're going to keep being champions there with, with so much firepower. Ten confianza, Barcelona's four points up. No es que no tenga confianza, pero lo que estoy diciendo es que si uh, es Mbappe, he's, gonna, he's at Real Madrid, he's going to score goals or he's going to slow down or lo que sea. But Barcelona need to not get injured and then play good footy like they have and keep this being consistent. Yeah. If they can be consistent, then they can challenge uh, Real Madrid towards the end of the season for the title. Lastar cabrón. Lastar cabrón. Yep, yep, yep. Um, do you think Mbappe will score more than 10 goals? More yeah. than 20 goals? I think he'll, he'll score more than 25 20 25 goals? Uh, In think, league, no más. Uh, 25 goals might be a stretch. I think around that. What, they got 38 games? Yeah. I mean, he already has two. In two one in game. four games. How many does he have of it? He scored the first game, no? So I think he has three I total. He, did, he did. Uh, stats. Yeah, he has. Oh, he only has, he only has two. Oh, just those two. Interesting. Brahim Diaz has one, which he's underrated. A lot of people are saying that he's underrated by the way he plays. Um, they were comparing him to, fuck, uh, I think they were comparing him to Osil. Uh, just nah. being, or Hassan. Okay, when yeah. When, he, when he's on the mas. ball and just being Eso able to mas. Eso sí. Uh, the last thing I want to call in La Liga, just for funsies, Sevilla is in relegation zone again. <laughs> Sevilla is just a meme at this point. This, this season, it might be a little bit more serious in all honesty. Um, but. Yeah, they're already Sevilla down there. Yeah, and Valencia down there. Holy crap. Yeah, but uh, we'll believe Sevilla a little bit more just from the past couple seasons. Yeah, true. No le veo. No le veo. All right, taking it on to other leagues, let's just touch uh, La Bundesliga real quick because Bayern le never losing. Mm -hmm. They definitely lose did. Uh, they lost their unbeaten run in the Bundesliga. They lost to Leipzig after winning 2-0. Leipzig le dio la vuelta a 3-2. That's a crazy way to lose your undefeated streak. Which is crazy, which uh, we were, uh, which is funny because we've known Bayern Leverkusen to do what they, yep. lo que le hicieron a ellos, 90 right? plus minutes, 90 score plus a goal. minutes, score a goal, or in the 90, uh, score two goals to, to end up with a tie. Uh, but now, le dieron la vuelta a ellos, and they've lost, it's their first loss since May of 2023. That's crazy. So it's been over a year. I wonder if Xavi Alonso is pissed or if he's just like, you know what? Se gana y se pierde. I mean, streaks are meant to be broken. <laughs> True. So But yeah. now if when you're winning 2-0. Yeah, uh, he must have been pissed in my opinion. Probably. For real. For real. But now they get to start all over again. I bet uh -huh. you that's what Xavi told them. All right, folks, let's bring it to Liga MX. Okay, ya se puso bueno. Sí. He said, Puso bueno because you're America. They got humiliated. Yeah. In all honesty. Gotta face Cruz the Azul. music here. Usually it's Omar. Cruz Azul could have scored. I know. I'm going <laughs> to enjoy this segment. <laughs> they, Cruz Azul could have scored more. Dude, for real. They had a lot more chances off the post. Toma la acá, de acá, de para atrás. Tú quieras, te lo meto ahorita aquí. America was like, yo, ya acaba el árbitro, ya acaba lo. Por favor. They lost 4-1. They were winning 1-0, no? Yeah, they started off winning at the 17th minute, and they looked well for most of that first half. But I don't know, Mas Yokumakis scored that goal in the 44th. He... Pinche Yokumakis. Pinche Griego. Yeah, yeah. Agarrense, <laughs> cabrón. Es que de ahí les fue horrible for everything else in America. No, hombre. Um, Angel Sepulveda even scored. Alexis Gutierrez and Farabelli in the last goal. But What a banger. The there was goal. a meme that, that had like a, a fake interview with Eric Lira. And he's like, no, hombre, me aburrí que hasta le daba el balón a, a Fidalgo para quitárselo otra vez. <laughs> Yo, Fidalgo's been pissing me off porque... You got player of the match on football, though. He is so predictable now. 
Like, no tiene nada que digamos... You used to be uh, so dynamic. Yeah, but I feel like they've already... Okay, if he has the ball, déjalo y mejor le cubro el espacio en vez de seguirlo. Um, and then he, he can't shoot to save his life. No tiene una pegada del outside of the box que a veces falta un chingo. No le llega el balón. Sí le llega, nomás que tiene una pata como la de you want to be goalie? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that trick I consider it. That trick aiming to the left and goes way off to the right like Alan Mozos. Um, <laughs> Not this weekend, eso sí te digo. I know, I know. We'll talk about sí, that a little bit. Le van a decir pata chueca, güey. Le van a decir el cacas al pinche Fidalgo si no se ponen las pilas. But I think overall just America... A lot of people are saying they're not in crisis, but for me, they're in crisis. They're in crisis. They're in 12th place. They got six total points. I mean, ganan dos y suben hasta el pinche sexto. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's not... I saw a lot of people joking, like, espérense a octubre, a noviembre. Espérense. Ay, que me espero, cabrón. But that's the thing. The people that are screaming crisis is like, bro, no, we need them right now. Porque luego vamos a acabar bajos en la tabla, nos va a tocar un... Cruz Azul otra vez, nos va a tocar un Tigres y va a estar cabrón. Yeah, I think America has, again, too many midfielders that don't know what they are doing half of the time. Chiquito uh, Sanchez seems lost. They're, seems looking, like, they're looking thin. Yeah, they are. They're having to put in Nestor Araujo at center back. That's, yeah. that's not some your first pick. Dil Ruzon is coming in uh, from an injury, but still has never looked, even when he wasn't injured, never looked amazing. Um, Julian Quinones' departure has really hurt America, and Brian Rodriguez shows good signs, but lo se apaga el siguiente mm -hmm. juego. Um, so, in, I think we need more firepower on the left side, or we need Sender has to come back badly, porque even con él, you can put him anywhere, he retains the ball and has that extra, um, like, will to go forward and go actually score a goal that America doesn't have. Uh, Diego Valdez is now injured. Henry Martin, he's a jugador de área, pero si no le llegan los balones, no te puede meter gol. Um, it's Chiquito just a lot, of, a lot of things with America that is just not working. Chiquito Sanchez, ¿para qué lo traer? Yeah, exactly. I don't know if they were anticipating Fidalgo leaving or what, but like... Sobra. Ahora it's too much. Que it's sobra. too much. And he's like, you see him on the bench and it like makes sense. You're like, yeah. Yeah, you probably should come <laughs> off the bench. And you're like, no, that was last year's, like, MVP. Exactly. What he are you talking about? champions not too long ago. But in America, se ve más chico. Se sí. ve como que no está haciendo lo que hacía con Pachuca. He doesn't have the players around him that I think fit his, the type of play that he does. And then they're asking a lot of him at America. They're like, all right, well, do what you did at Pachuca. Yeah. And it's just, I don't think he can do that with America. It's different. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, y lo pesa la camiseta at the end of the day oh, as well. Yeah. It's like you're at America, you're expected to do things, and you don't think psychologically that hurts as well, Chiquito. Anybody. Yeah, right? Rodrigo Aguirre, too, coming from. Rodrigo uh, Otro. Supposedly, supposed to come in and just take over and yeah. scored one goal the first match. He pulled down. Yeah, scored another one at St. Louis. And it's like, okay, pero volvemos a lo mismo. No es un jugador diferente, no es un jugador que te toque. It's just like America seems lost. Jardine needs to come up with the ideas and come up with the plan of how they're going to play if they need to defend better, work on defensive. Or, okay, o pedirle al, al, al dueño, hey, traete otro left winger, saca la chequera y vámonos. Pedirle al papi, hace otras dos o tres telenovelas y tráeme uno de, de Sevilla. O hey, play de... those reruns de la gaviota so we get más sí. dinerito. Pon 12 corazones. Por favor, porque el que me trajiste, Chiquito Sánchez, por todo lo que pagaste es Ahora está perdido. But the coach probably asked for him, no? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like... Entonces yo como dueño digo, hey. Lo, lo pediste, ahora pónmelo. Mételo sí. y hazlo jugar bien, que exactly. supuestamente tú sabías. Yes. If he brought him in, what was the point of bringing him in? Because like as was an owner... Because... Yeah. As an owner, you're like, bro, you got last year's MVP, Eric Sanchez, on the bench. You got Rodrigo Aguirre, baller from Monterrey on the bench. Alan Cervantes, starter at Santos on the bench. Javairo from fucking Feyenoord. You yeah. got Chicote que te lo traje para que no te metiera golazos. <laughs> I'm dead. Like Kevin Alvarez, who just spent doing? like nine or eight million lo que pagas por él. Todo Play with the sub 20 s Like you got so you have players there. America's never gonna have a like a like a shortage. 
but it's like the moments that they're in what can what can uh how did they get out of them como yeah. que ahorita, como que they're in a lull yeah they are they are uh yes crisis aunque americanistas no lo crean aunque no quieran sí. decirlo they're in crisis es crisis you know who's not in crisis mis chivas yeah but your chivas can they're they're like this you know well, so ahorita van así Y viene el clásico, eh. Andan jugando. Y, pues, uh, you don't have to tell me, goddamn. <laughs> y andan. It's the next match yeah. on the 14th. You're like, I'm waiting for it. Can't come any sooner. On the 14th. They get a break this weekend, right? There's no yeah. matches this weekend. And then the 14th en el Aste, en el Aste, en la Ciudad de los Deportes. Yeah. But, yeah, Chivas won 5-0 uh, versus Ju Los Poderosísimos Juárez, who, uh, who played the second half with... Uh, 10 players because Salcedo was just yes, trying to break dude, fools. Dude, Salcedo's so funny, bro. That fool salió enojado. This, the, I don't know, maybe personal problems. I'm gonna scare some madras. That fool's hitting everybody. He should have got a red card before that. Yeah, he was hurting. With that uh, jump up in the air, he pushed, I don't know who. Yeah, and the red card, he fucking went straight in for an ankle at uh, Nuestro Lord and Savior, La Hormiga. Oh, shit, for real. No, es porque está joven y sus tendones todavía están perfect, si no. A mí, güey, no, hombre. I'm out. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> but yeah, La Hormiga scored in the first in the first minute, basically, in that full hit of fucking Naruto celebration. Cha, 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 cha. And uh, ya, ya con eso, he's tied for top goal scorer de Chivas. Damn. I mean, ¿pa' qué meter a Marín? Ever. Again. Ever. <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> he's, this Honestly, is the first yeah. game that La Hormiga starts. Uh, Marin has been the starter and wait, ni me doy cuenta que juega, no mames. For real, uh, Hormiga, hopefully, as a Mexican, he needs to kill it para que we have a repeat of uh, Chicharito. Uh, pero, yeah, I mean, your Chivas 5 0, even Alan Monso scored. So I don't give it too much of a second thought because it's Juarez. And if Alan Monso scoring, then you know the level. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, I mean, your Chivas... But they're high-flying right now, we, Chivas. We've mentioned it before. They needed a striker, and if Hormiga is their striker, then you guys are a decent team. Three wins in the last four. Out of those four, they haven't lost. So they're doing good. If you have a good young striker in La Hormiga playing at a top at a good level right now, like, bro, like I think this, this team is probably feeling very good about their odds in the season right now. Um, I'm excited for this. Yeah, and Fidel like, Barajas came in. Fidel Barajas came in, he didn't looked, get his goal. He looked well. Yal Padilla came he in and he got a well. goal. Yeah, a little bit of a, a little facilito. Jonathan Padilla. Piojo did all the all the work. Le hizo sombrerito al portero, al defensa, al portero, mm -hmm. and then he just tapped it in. But he needed that goal so that um, Gago takes him into account again because he hasn't been showing him some love to Yal Padilla, to the wonder kid. Yeah, but see, you guys have another player there que. Puede venir y impactar también Joven. con el Fidel Barajas. Um, Omar Govea, also, I, I was interesting seeing him there. Uh, I, I don't know if it's because they played Juarez, but I think he did a decent job. Um, pero, I again. St I still just don't know why they brought him. Like, it's too, right. like, you don't need defensive mids. You don't need holding mids. You need players hacia adelante, un Fidel Barajas. Like, those players to bring them in. Y no me gustó. But, I mean... You spent two and a half million on him. Is it for him to be your backup? Yeah. That's not a luxury that you have right now at Chivas, man. Yeah, I guess. Two and a half million doesn't seem like a lot in market these days. But they got but the same for JJ. Macias? Yeah. So, like, yeah. bro, like, I mean, I guess it's a little smart, no? I mean, spend that two and a half on an offensive type player. But at least you have a player player that's available. Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. Yeah, bro. Like, I mean, <laughs> spend it on Diego Luna. The the Russell Lake, no, it's nothing about more. Nah, he would have went for more. Yeah, but like use that money towards it, right? Yeah. Like, no, hombre, no, le, no le entendí, no le entendí. So uh, America's next, and then. Tráemelos, cabrón. Tráemelos. Relax, dude. It's not gonna be easy. No, pues quién dice que va a ser easy? Pero pues va a estar bueno. We have León, Cruz Azul, Monterrey. So it's gonna be a pretty tough. Uh, next few few games for you Pero guys. ya están listos, cabrones. Andamos ilusionados. No más Atlán in there. Give Los que, I know. That, those are always the easy, the Friday matches, no? <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are killing it right now. Tijuana's, Tijuas. I haven't been 
I've I've seen tweets about like their youngsters or fifteen year olds, Fuck, yeah. sixteen year olds. But oh, I haven't seen them play. Efrain Alvarez right now is balling out. They got they they're playing very well. They're in fourth place with fourteen points. Jesus Christ! Yeah, el profe Juan Carlos Osorio has got them cooking right now. They're playing matches with eight, seven to eight. Mexicans. Mexican players, creados in Mexico, really good young players too, giving them the opportunity. He's he's like a cap, not captain, but he's put a lot of responsibility on Efrain Alvarez, who is starting to ball out. Like a lot of people are just like, bro, if you just became fit, you would be fucking Carlos Vela. I don't know. Maybe it's that psychological piece because we've known Juan Carlos Osorio to be very detail oriented with mm. his teams, so maybe he's telling. Este, Fraín Álvarez, que si hay many disciplinas, uh, LA Galaxy, even with Pio Herrera, now he's taking more of like an approach saying, tú eres el capitán, dependemos de ti, us put the team on your back and yeah. perform. If we do well, it's because you, yeah, you're doing and, well. And maybe now that he's doing really well, now he's, se está poniendo las pilas. Oh, well. No, oh. yeah, and he's, that dude's balling out. He's assisting every game. He's got a goal and an assist on the season. 7.3. He's, he's he's killing it. Yeah. Um, and then they got Gilberto Mora, the kid on the other side, the 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. Number uh, 251. That's how you know. He's, he'd love those triple digits. But he's, yeah, he's balling out. He scored his first goal in this match against Leon uh, in a beautiful play. Le cayó de rebote. Like a, he dropped that ball down. La mató como un hombre sote, como si fuera un pinche 10-year veteran en la liga. And he put it right, he put it away clinically. Two thousand eight born. That's crazy, bro. No manches, güey. Tenía yo pinches quince. Ya tenías pelos en el fundillo, güey. Ya apenas había nacido, güey. No, dude. Yeah. I was struggling to beat your JV, and that fool was barely being. <laughs> no, but I mean, and Futura de Mexico, ahí está, and he's apparently gonna go try out uh, uh, to a trial at Feyenoord or some. Oh, shit. Some team in, in uh, the Dutch league. So, que la vaya bien. Que vaya de lo mejor. Gilberto Mora. DC. Uh, the last note that I want to call out, Santos. They actually won. Cabrones, va a llover. For real. Va a llover los de... Uh, los de Nacho Ambriz. Huh? Los de Nacho Ambriz. Los de Torreón. They finally gave him a good result. Because no manches le van a correr el way. Which he... I mean, we don't want a Trump base to get fired. Dude. That dude's a good coach. But they ended up coming back. They got a W against uh, Necaxa, which también Eduardo Fentanes. We don't want that fool to get fired either. But um, le resultaron los jugadores a uh, Nacho Ambriz. Santiago Muñoz finally with the goal. Let's go. Finally. There's a, If you're – we're all Santos fans right now because yes. it's a lot of youth players. The Mexico, Jordan Carrillo balled out. So, I mean, they're looking – they're looking not so good, but they're que vayan acumulando puntos, pues va bien. Porfis, este, yeah, a lot of a lot is riding on this Santos team. Um, we've called it out that we hope it's like a Pachuca kind of model where they're gonna struggle for a bit, and then hopefully in a season or two, all those young kids have had enough first division experience where they start doing well. Yeah, and we hope uh, against Necaxa, scratching a three-two victory. Uh, we hope it's one of many where they're going to continue to do well. And then hopefully we see uh, the Navedas, the um, Santiago Munoz, or what's his last name? Munoz, yeah. Munoz. Uh, yeah, see him in the Selección Mexicana or maybe even Europe. So, yeah, long term with this Santos. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, 3-2 victories, really good for them. You see. All right, so yeah, more to come for Liga Mekis, especially after this international break. Um, the last thing I want to call out, Cesar, before we go to the games to watch, in top news, we got the U.S. men's national team in, in uh, with some breaking news, apparently not fully confirmed. We're still waiting on final signing, but apparently they're going to be signing Pochettino, Mauricio Pochettino. Um, this is what we've been talking about. Stop fucking around with these MLS mm -hmm. kids and bring you un cabrón de nombre. Yeah, big name for sure with Pochettino was at Tottenham where he made his name. Uh, he was at Southampton before that. Worked with a lot of young kids, which got him the job at Tottenham. And then went to PSG mm -hmm. and then was without a club, right? Yep. Uh, came no, to Chelsea. he went to Chelsea. And then, uh, yeah, now he's uh, he was without a club. 
Uh, the rumor is that he's always been fond of the U.S. men's national team job. Um, because he, no he had no connections with the uh, with the U.S. soccer organization, lo que sea. Um, I think it's good overall, especially for the players, especially for the players, knowing that they have somebody who's been at Champions League, Champions League finals. Yes, he hasn't won much, but still, you know, has been there. Um, in my opinion, I think for me, he's on fraud watch because of that. Damn. Because he hasn't won many things with uh, at the club uh, level that I don't know if, if he didn't have it at club level, he has the time to work with players, to bring in transfers. Um, what gives me gives him a reason that me to believe that he'll do well at the national team level? Yeah. Where it's limited time, where you only have a limited uh, pool of players. And uh, when the stakes are higher, right? Si no ganas, uh, you've been at a job for six months or lo que sea, y, and you don't do well at the World Cup or Nations League or lo que sea, adios, right? Yeah, but you in have a few games. Yeah, in my opinion, um, he also has a, l- a little bit papita because, like, in, in all honesty, like I think he'll have a little bit of time to to start delivering results. Um, I think it's going to be a big process for him. Even right now, they, I mean, they're having an interim Mikey Varas, and I'm sure he's going to cook the same teams that Mexico is going to play. I'm sure they're going to kill it against them and, and win those games. But I think Pochettino, they'll, they'll give them the reins to, to take your time, get this team good, because we believe in like a long like a long vision of, of what you're going to be doing that by 2026 in two years, and then by 2030, we're going to have like top 10 team by 2030 or something, right? Which, I, I mean, this dude, dude, he has a resume to him. He balled out with every team that he's had. Obviously not winning a trophy with either of them yeah. but um but i think leaps and bounds above anything that the u.s has seen and i think the the players are going to reflect that like the the pool six can play at the top of their level not just what what their skill allows them to but what their the coach can empower them versus like a burhalter i think it was just like all right well like burhalter probably told you guys some fucking shit like como jugar but this dude is going to tell you guys how to win uh, especially against a lot of the nations that you're going to be playing against. He's played against tougher opponents. Um, so, I am I mean, I'm excited for the U.S. This is what they needed. Uh, and, I mean, there's a limited amount of coaches that have won fucking Champions League and won their leagues. So, like, yeah. agarrar a ellos hubiera sido cabrón to get, like, a Zidane. I mean, like a, you shot for Klopp. Klopp didn't want it. I was screaming for Joaquim Lowe because he's also doesn't have a job right now. He's won. Yeah. Um I don't know. Uh, Fernand Renard was another one. He's won uh, in in Africa. The ah no, but that's a no like bigger trophies. No, but I mean, I think a good one that would have that should have been in contention at the same time would have been like Thomas Tuchel. He won Champions League with Chelsea, okay. right? And he knows the, he from Dortmund. He knows which is a huge academy for American players. He knows the Pool Six. He knows Gio Reyna from there, yeah. and then he coached Pool Six at Chelsea. At that Chelsea. won the Champions League, yeah. like. A lot of people hated the que no le dio todos los minutos, but, but like, uh, that, that, that would have been, been a, a good a, one. Yeah, that would have been a, a better one, from my, in my opinion, than Pochettino. But, but I think Pochettino, I think gold star, honestly, for the Federation. You could have gone with fucking Steve Chorundolo from yes. LA, yes. and we would have called it a stinker on here. Yeah, Terrible which stinker. we thought it was going to be the higher probability. Um, I, I didn't have Pochettino in the radar for, for him to be the U.S. Miss National Team coach, but I, kudos to them for bringing him in. Yeah, let him fail, dude. Like, let let an international superstar coach fail. Fuck yeah. it. I mean, Mexico. in my opinion, Mexico went with the completely wrong one by bringing Tata in yeah. when they could have brought in a Mar- Marcelo Bielsa desde ese entonces. They could have brought in, I don't know, like Marcelo Gallardo from Argentina. They could have brought in, I don't know, like Matias Almeida, even though it's not that big of a name, but like... Uh, a lot of better extranjeros. Uh, but in this case, they brought a primed coach in his prime, let him take the team, let him fail. But it's a lot more likely that with like a bottle gun with a Pulisic Reina, that full cooks. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm Mexico, I'm like Loki a little bit worried. Like is that full going to outsmart that, that, um, uh, outsmart, uh, Vasco. Is he just going to cook when they play against each other? Yeah, Vastar Cabron. I'm excited for Vasco just because of how he's played with 
uh, like Mallorca, Leganés, Osasuna. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting when he faces Pochettino. Yep. I want I want Rafa Marquez. That's who I'm excited about. I'm hoping Rafa Marquez provides that that new idea, the spark that that Vasco probably needs from a uh, vieja escuela, um, and because they're going to need all the help against Dude, that sorry. U.S. talent with a world class coach, it's going to be tough. Yeah. All right, games to watch. That's how Let's go. We got UEFA Nations League back this weekend. We got Germany against Hungary. And then we also got Netherlands against Bosnia. I'm excited to see them back after the Euros. We'll see which national team is coming back better. Um, but yeah, excited to see some international footy again. Beautiful. I got in the same nat- Nations League I got on Friday, France versus Italy. At the end, it's going to be a powerhouse game. Can Italy get back to their reign at the top of the footy world? Or are they just going to keep failing out of the international tournaments? And then I also got USA versus Canada. This is Mickey Varas, uh, who is apparently the next uh, San Diego FC coach, is the interim coach for the U.S. men's national team. He's going to get um, unlimited star power, unlimited talent with the U.S. men's national team players against the Canadian team who's going to be out for blood. Uh, Jesse Marsh going to want some revenge against the U.S. And then we also got Mexico against New Zealand this weekend. We have Javier Aguirre's first match back in his third go-around with Mexico. Um, now with Rafa Marquez uh, helping him out, we'll see if this Mexican team can uh, bounce back from a pretty bad performance at Copa America against a fairly easy New Zealand team. We'll see if the youngsters can also pull their weight so they can get recalled back up against that USA uh, friendly in a couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, excited to see this new Mexico squad. All right, folks. Well, that's all that we got for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed having us back in your ears, in your headphones, wherever you listen to us. Uh, Like we say, follow us on all socials, subscribe to us, share us with a friend so that we can keep growing. Join the Discord. It's popping right now, especially with Premier League over the weekend. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll talk soon. Peace. Peace.